Hi, this is Bitluni and today I'm going to add a simple IoT hack to my old school doorbell so it notifies me through my DIY lamp. So I got a small problem. I receive a lot of packets on a daily basis, but my lamp is in the basement where I do my research all day and I miss the doorbell from time to time. A few moments later. This is especially troublesome when I have to pick up the packets elsewhere. I made some videos on DIY home automation and IoT that could help here. It should be easy to let the doorbell notify me by flashing the small lamp I printed recently. The lamp uses an ESP8266 microcontroller with Wi-Fi. The WLED software running on it provides a web-based user interface for configuration and patterns. But it also supports different network interfaces like MQTT, REST or UDP. I can simply send a message over network to switch to another preset using those interfaces. This is my default preset. And I could use this one to notify me of the doorbell. The only piece missing is the part that hooks to the doorbell and sends a packet through my Wi-Fi to change the preset. Let's take a look inside the doorbell. This one is really old school. There are two wires coming in connecting to a solenoid. Whenever the doorbell is pressed, we get 12 volt AC on the two wires. These power the solenoid which hits the chimes. This is a typical installation here in Europe. You can test it using a multimeter in DC and AC mode. The DC mode will only show the DC offset. The AC mode will show 12 volt no matter which way you measure. This 12 volt transformer is usually placed in the breaker box. And sure enough I found it there. It says 12 volt AC at 2 amps. Which is also good to know for us. Tapping into these wires to detect the doorbell should be doable. If we want to power a Wi-Fi microcontroller to trigger our lamp, we need 3.3 volts DC for a few seconds to let it connect to the Wi-Fi and send the packets. But the bell is only powered momentarily. I did some deep sleep solutions in the past, but at the end the battery ended up drained and I never recharged it. I want a very simple solution here that doesn't require any maintenance. How about we try to store as much of the momentary power as possible and use a fast method to send a packet before the microcontroller browns out. And that's actually what I did. A simple method that doesn't require a special hardware on the receiving end is to connect to the Wi-Fi and simply spam UDP packets right away. That doesn't require any response from the receiving side. But there is also no guarantee that UDP packets arrive. We simply spam it until we run out of power and hope some come through. The Arduino code for this is only a few lines long. You can find it linked along the parts and tools I used in the description below. Connecting to the Wi-Fi takes the most, it can be up to a few seconds. Sending the first UDP packet is only a few milliseconds. Let's harvest the power for it. First of all we need to convert the AC to DC using a full bridge rectifier. Then we can use huge capacitors to store enough power to keep our microcontroller alive. After the full bridge rectifier we have 12 volt DC, so I take capacitors with a 16 volt rating to be on the safe side. Next we need to convert the 12 volt peak voltage to 3.3 volts. Using a simple voltage regulator would convert any excess voltage to heat, which is very wasteful in this case. Uh, using a buck boost DC to DC converter is a much better choice since it will always output 3.3 volts and convert either the voltage down from 12 or even up from 2 volts to the 3.3 that we need. But there are also a few things to consider. Capacitors draw a huge amount of current in the beginning. We have only around 2 amps, not counting the power the bell requires itself. It might be required to put a resistor in series to limit the current we draw. This unfortunately also increases the duration it takes to get the charge we need. Using Ohm's law we can calculate the required resistance. This is the voltage, 12 volts. And this is the current, 2 amps, equals 6 ohms. That's actually quite neglectable in my case, since the wires from the doorbell are so long and thin, they probably have the resistance already. You should try going safe first and take as low of a resistance and capacitance 
as possible, which still is able to send a signal. I settled for 0 ohms and 30 millifarad. There is also another protective measure we should consider. Since my doorbell uses a solenoid, the discharge of the coil might reach higher voltages than our circuit is rated for. A back-to-back Zener -back diode with a reverse voltage of 16 volts should cut off any high voltage spike. Let's connect everything and see it for ourselves. This is the voltage reading we get only with the doorbell attached. There is a spike here. And this is with the Zener diodes. The spike is gone. <laughs> it works like a treat. Cool. Yeah. This is our input voltage after the full bridge rectifier. And this is the output voltage after the step down converter. I will use a third probe with a coil attached as an antenna to see when the packets are sent. So it's, the setting is very sensitive here and we should see activities when I put it close to the antenna of the Wi-Fi microcontroller. These are the two DC power lines and this is the Wi-Fi activity on the third probe. This is highly amplified with only 10 millivolts per division, but we can see some activity there. And this is the section where we press the doorbell and the capacitors are charged and then slowly discharged and this is the 3.3 volts from our DC to DC converter and as soon we get the power to the microcontroller there is a higher activity there on the Wi-Fi this is where the microcontroller tries to connect to the Wi-Fi and as soon the connection is established it starts spamming UDP packets this is a high active area here and we have the most current draw so the voltage drops much faster until we run out of power here and this is where the microcontroller stops sending. It was still good enough to send the packets and activate the lamp. Cool. I solder this whole thing and try fitting it in the cavity of the doorbell. Good enough and still working. There is one thing I want to improve though. Currently the microcontroller in the doorbell just spams packets until it dies. I want however to recover the last state of the lamp after it's done alarming me. If I send the packet to the server first that controls the lamp properly, the doorbell code doesn't even need to know that there is a lamp. That reminded me of my abandoned Node-RED server I used for my IoT projects in my old home. Time to revive it. The Node-RED server version is really old, but it's still running. Not sure how outdated my video on that is, but you can check it out if you are interested. It's basically a simple graphical interface where you can specify a flow. This flow does all we need. It listens for any UDP packets that arrive at a specific port. This activates a trigger that turns on for 10 seconds. Any new packet during this time will simply reset the timer. When the trigger starts, the old state of the lamp is fetched and stored. Then the alarm preset is activated and when the trigger timer runs out, the old state of the lamp is set again. Super simple. We can extend this flow to do even more fancy stuff if we like. But for now I'm quite happy with the result. If you liked this project, please subscribe and share it with a friend. 
That really helps. Thank you for watching, a special thanks to all of my supporters and I see you next time. Bye!